Riddle me this, riddle me that. We'll be checking out another figure from Missions of the Bat. Actually, to be more exact, we'll be checking out the Mattel Batman Missions. This is the villain known as Riddler. First thing we'll do is figure out how tall the Riddler stands and we'll put the tape measure right to the top of his head and we will stop it right there. The figure is exactly six inches in height, which in centimeters, let me go ahead and switch that over for you. Centimeters, you're looking at 15.4 centimeters tall. He gets a couple of accessories, such as his gold trademark cane. Now, it does look like it's cast in gold plastic instead of actually being painted gold over top of an existing plastic. It is a rather thick handled uh, cane, although it does fit very well in his hand. I'll show you that in a second. It's pretty simplistic, yet very effective looking details. And I do like the shape of the uh, the the question mark as it's a very thick and chunky question mark does look good on him this little bulbous end on the end of the cane makes me think actually it can fit inside of a backpack or a missile launcher and this is one of those uh, friction missiles which you would push the back and it would fire off I don't have anything actually at the moment right now that I could show you but I'm wondering if maybe that's why that is there Needless to say, as I had mentioned, it fits very easily into either one of his hands. Luckily, it is thick enough so that when you are putting it in, putting it in his hand, uh, it's not going to go anywhere. Like, he does have a good, solid grip to it. And ideally, as well, if you want to just have him displayed with almost as if he's holding the cane, like a traditional cane, you can also clamp it around his hand. Although, it works a lot better on this side if you want to use it more so like a, a gripping cane versus like a, like a weapon, for example. The other thing he comes included with is his boulder cap. And it fits very easily on his head. It's a, a soft plastic. I know you're asking one thing, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second, but the boulder hat fits very easily onto his head. It's not going anywhere. I guess I could hold it by his hat to show you. It's not going anywhere. This would be the prime time for this to fall out. But uh, yeah, I do think it looks pretty good. It's got the gold and it's got the purple banding there as well. A little harder to make out because it's translucent plastic, which will be one thing that I want to immediately talk a little bit about this figure. I didn't get the memo. Did you get the memo? Hey, did you get the memo? No, you didn't get the memo. Okay, some somewhere along the lines, there was a memo going around that Riddler apparently was see-through. That's the only thing I can deduce for the fact that he is made up comprised of a translucent green plastic. I cannot figure out why they would have opted to give him green translucent plastic other than just the novelty of, well, he's green, so why don't we make him see-through rather than fully opaque? Like his arms, his legs, everything is see-through translucent green plastic. I can't figure out why they would have done this. I mean, it does, to the credit of Riddler, make him look a little more schnazzier because if they had just given him a green, a green suit... Being at all solid green plastic would have been, you know, traditional Riddler. But I guess they decided, well, we we're going to do something a little bit more for it. The packaging doesn't tout it at all as being like some subcategory line. Like, I don't even know what you would call this. Like, energy suits. This is energy suit Riddler. Again, I don't understand why it has to be translucent plastic. Of course, one problem that's going to come as well, aesthetically, of course, it looks off-putting when you compare it to other figures, for example. But one problem that you may have is uh, clear, clear pegs. Although, the more I look at it, it does look like it's using solid plastic. It's not using the clear plastic for the joints. So maybe they're, you know, you're not going to have any problems with it. But it certainly is really off-putting to see you know, how Riddler comes together. The joint in his elbow, for example. The joint in his shoulder, for example. Just doesn't make any sense whatsoever to me. This is a soft plastic. 
I guess in theory you could open it, but it doesn't look like, no, it's not finished. It only is painted here uh, underneath all this. It's just, again, more translucent green plastic. He has peg holes on the undersides of his feet. Um, we've already looked at this. He does not have display stands. None of the Batman mission figures have display stands. But again, I guess somewhere along the lines, that's going to serve some purpose to the collectors of these lines. I'm going to take the hat off, for example, for a second. We'll just have a look at his face sculpt. I suppose it does look like Riddler, but I mean, you know, if you give him purple glasses and Riddler's colors are purple and green, sure, okay, we can write off for the fact that that is a Riddler head sculpt. It actually kind of looks like more something I would have seen from an old like 80s toy line, like for example, a Robocop toy line, or even Cops. Something that this would have been like an old action hero line that we would have picked up as a kid, or I certainly would have picked up in the 80s. That's sort of what I'm getting here when I'm looking at Riddler's head sculpt. In no way does it really look like Riddler. In fact, it kind of looks a little bit like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's got no bands connecting his glasses, so we're sort of expecting that he's kind of like Morpheus in the fact that you know, his glasses just sort of levitate on top of his nose. Unfortunately, he's got a whole lot of extra paint also as a result of that. He's got this purple splotching of paint on the side of his face. It's sort of a very futuristic style of shades also, which doesn't unfortunately go with the coloring of his tie. I don't know if it was supposed to go with the coloring of his tie, but it ultimately isn't. He's also got purple gloves and the bands, now this is actually rather interesting, the fact that his bands, the end cuffed sleeves of his black shirt, and yet again, you can see right through all of his arms. So where that shirt exists somewhere in this, this virtual reality that is Riddler's arm is beyond me. Uh, posability on this guy, his head rotates all the way around. It hinges, not really the greatest, I mean, it, that's that's as far up as it goes, and it goes with a whole lot of force. The head tilts down, but not really a whole lot either. Like I said, the head rotates back and forth. There's no real rocking back and forth either. The arms hinge out. That's some credit to the toy line. And you can rotate the arms all the way around. It does have a bend in the elbow, which also allows the forearm to rotate. A little loose, unfortunately, as well. And I just literally got this guy out of packaging. Hands rotate, waist rotates, despite for the fact that he's got the the jacket uh, called the jacket over top of his waist, still rotates fairly easy. Legs move forward. Sorry, yes, legs move back, and he also has a bend at the knee. Doesn't have anything from what I can see in foot articulation. I guess he doesn't really necessarily need foot articulation. But that, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, mine is dropping his hat. It's just down here. There we go. Put that back on there. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I present to you Exhibit R. That would be R for Riddler. I don't even think exhibits go that far. Maybe, I guess, if you're an extensive criminal going to court, exhibits could go all the way up to Z, I guess, if you wanted to. But Exhibit R is Riddler. Strange. Best word to describe him. Coloring, I guess, is good. It's Riddler-esque. But still, the translucent plastic escapes me altogether. Perhaps this figure is one of Edward Nigma's most complex of riddles, one that will never really be solved. Was the intent of Mattel to eventually spin off this line, giving all their figures translucent plastic? Did somebody sitting at Mattel decide, well, we need to make Riddler a little bit more exciting. Why don't we give him translucent green plastic? I know I'm beating a dead horse, but it still doesn't make any sense when really all the other figures have regular plastic. I guess they just decided that Riddler needed to be cooler. Riddler doesn't need to be cool. Riddler's already a pretty cool villain. He doesn't really need the gimmick of a translucent green plastic. And yet, in final looks, I think it's the one thing that stands out for this figure. So I guess mission accomplished, Edward Nigma. You've stumped me on this riddle. Mattel has stumped me as well. But I guess he's a neat figure for the fact that he's got the the same thing that I found fault with, now my head hurts as well. Either way though, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, the Batman Missions Riddler is now on store shelves. I think him and Batgirl are some of the more recent additions to the Batman Missions line. 
So if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, you should be able to find them now at retail stores and toy stores alike. If you want to go back and have a look at some of my other Batman Missions reviews, there's a whole playlist there. And we're going to have a look at some future Batman Missions figures and vehicles on this channel. So stay tuned for that. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.